three things you can steal from Rocket Mortgage to apply to your business today. Today on my show, I have Bekem Merdita. Bekem is Vice President of Rocket Mortgage Canada and is um, he's my guest. We talk about three things that the average broker can learn from Rocket Mortgage and then apply to your mortgage business. One of the things he talks about is the importance of data. And I'm actually, they track literally everything at Rocket, like to the down to the like minuscule amount and it allows them to make better decisions. As the average mortgage broker, you're probably not going to have access to that much data. At the end of this episode, I'm going to give you five things that if I were tracking, if I were you, these are the five key metrics that you want to track. I'll talk about those at the end. Before we jump into this episode with Bekem, I want to give a shout out to our title sponsor, Finmo. Finmo is a Canadian mortgage application, document collection, submission platform designed specifically for Canadian borrowers. It's very easy for brokers to use. So it's got some cool features. It's got smart docs. It knows what docs your client needs based on how they fill up the app. It's got smart submission notes, pulls key data from the app to send to the lender. And it's connected to the lender spotlight, which has um, like seven or 8,000 different rates and guidelines for all the different lenders across the country. You can go in there and search. It's very powerful. Check them out at lendescom slash Finmo and check out this conversation I have with Bekem. Hey, Bekem, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me again, Scott. So, hey, tell me, I'd like to, before we get started, I got some questions I've lined up for you, but tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into the mortgage biz. Yeah, I'm the Executive Vice President of Rocket Mortgage Canada, been with the Canadian business now here in Canada for a little over four years, but been with Rocket overall coming coming up on 12 years now. Started over at Rocket in the US back when it was still Quicken Loans, working directly with consumers in the retail channel. And then in 2017, I uh, was privileged enough to join a, a startup group that was building out a national wholesale effort to work with mortgage brokers across the country. And we built what became QLMS, National Sales, later became Rocket Pro, TPO. As you mentioned recently, I saw uh, did about $28 billion in, in mortgage funding last year. In better years of like 2021, something across the lines of $100 billion in, in annual volume. So a pretty big, successful mortgage business over there. And all the while... Uh, now it's really been just about growing this Canadian business. Started with a really small team with uh, Chad and Hash as our, as our co-founders and a few others inside of the circle. Brendan Woodfull, our current EVP of sales, who's going to be leading the broker channel and Jake Sayami and some others, some great individuals, Chris Colasanti. And don't forget Tori. Don't forget Tori. Tori's awesome. Tori's amazing. Tori came on early as well. So yeah, just been building with a, with a core group of people who've, really been pushing themselves to uh, to get us to where we are today. And here we are four plus years later. Okay. And so, what, but how did you, I want to, I got one of the things I want to ask you about are some like the best basically, what are three things the average broker can uh, learn from Rocket to apply to their business? And, but before we talk about that, tell me, how did you become, because you were originally, you're an originator, right? Like, or you did loans, you worked for Rocket, you did loans. But so how did you get into that? Before you, now you're running the company, like doing all kinds of other stuff, but like you were on the ground, just yeah. like the average broker, crushing out mortgages and collecting bank statements and doing all the same thing that we do it. Most of us do every day. Yeah. I, uh, I like to say that I didn't choose mortgages. They, they chose me. It's like the the job that you know, when you're going to school, talking to your counselor and no one's ever like, Hey, do you think about becoming a mortgage agent when you get older? It's not typically a conversation that happens, but um, I was doing some interesting things. I worked for a family business. My dad owned a landscaping company. So I was doing that while going through school um, up until around 2012. I was also flipping some houses on the side. So this is like 2008 to 2012 growing up. There were a lot of houses Detroit. that were on the market at that time. Nobody wanted, you couldn't, you know, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, banks, um, you know, the city, if they had back taxes on them, like people were just giving houses away around that time on the cheap. And if you knew how to, you know, swing a hammer, do a few things or hire people, then you had the opportunity to go out there and, and pick some houses up. So did that, but it started to dry up around 2012. I had a friend who was working for Rocket Mortgage, and much like the uh, Wolf of Wall Street story, um, he showed up to my parents' house, showed me his most recent commission check, and I turned over to my dad and I said, "Dad, like this is too much money to to pass up. I've, I've got to take a chance and become a mortgage agent." So um, Rocket gave me a shot, and I started out from the ground floor. Was a mortgage agent they called the mortgage bankers over in the U.S. And just started working my way up through the company, team captain, director, you know, VP, sales, business development, pretty much learned how to do everything along along those lines across the entire organization. And 
certainly here in Canada, I've had the ability, you know, technology, product, marketing, et cetera. I've had the ability to learn every single part of our business. And um, I am fortunate that I get to really work on every part of the business now today. And I think that it's it's the cool part of being with a startup through that growth phase is you really get to experience more than just the mortgage themselves. But at my heart, I mean, I'm a, I'm a sales guy, literally started this, you know, selling t-shirts when I was a kid to selling burn CDs to people who wanted to make mixtapes for their friends. And now it's just mortgage is the only difference really. Right. Right. Okay. So always sell. Okay. So what are, what are three things do you think the average broker can learn from you guys are a you know, large organization? I mean, the Canadian version, the Canadian is smaller than the U S but you work in both. What are three things that they could learn and apply to their business? Yeah. So the first thing? I think that when people think about technology companies or, you know, mortgage companies that are technology forward, um, you know, they, they really probably get a little bit twisted up into what that actually means. The reality is, I, and I think this is a lesson for all brokers, especially right now with a lot of the language that's being spoken around like AI and replacing humans. Humans are not going away in the mortgage process anytime soon when it comes to, and especially in the sales process. I still view mortgage as sales and service business. And I think it will be that for the foreseeable future. So buttons haven't replaced people and we don't expect them to anytime soon. We do expect technology and specifically AI to make some advancements in terms of processing time and efficiencies. And we plan on being one of the main players who's helping push that technology to the forefront and making brokers businesses better, but it's still going to be a people business. Right. The second one I would say... Yes. Okay. Right. Just so I'm not, yeah. Before we jump onto the next one, so basically, your mortgages are a complex sale, as we both we've talked about this in the past, and it's not like a tech a software at the moment is not able to replace that where somebody clicks and buys you know a mortgage. If they're gonna they got to talk to somebody, they want to get some advice, and so even in at your guys' organization, it is actually a lot of sales that training that you guys do and a lot of service and thinking about serving the customer. It's not just it's not just technology. Like it's not it, that doesn't that doesn't solve everything. We get into a morning huddle every single day and we talk about how we're going to serve clients better, how we're going to have better communication with clients, how we're going to make things faster for clients, but it's all through people. And it's, it's, right. there's no talk of how we are going to replace the, the mortgage agent. The mortgage agent is the key to every sale. The, the relationship that you can make on an individual basis between that person who actually knows what they're talking about when it comes to mortgages. And the actual client who's pretty much just putting their hand in the air saying, somebody help me understand so that I don't make a catastrophic mistake on a $600,000 debt or an $800,000 debt. Like, I need someone to tell me what I'm doing. And I always think about Amazon in this regard. Like, I still triple check my Amazon cart before I hit the buy now button. It would be crazy to think that humans are at a place already right now in, in 2024 where they're going to click buy now on a on an eight hundred thousand dollar mortgage, and they don't even understand the fine point. like that. So that is worth this. Is actually, so I, I'm enough. a bad example of this because my daughter, she will throw things into my Amazon cart knowing that I don't pay attention. So like, oh, like an eye mask or something, and then when I go to hit buy, it's like, what the heck is all this other crap that's coming? And she's like, thanks, dad. So she's like, throws them in there and just waits. So, so she knows if dad goes to order something, he's going to hit the button and go. And then I, I did see, I do see it. I'm like, whatever, it's like ten bucks or something. But she's. She's got this figured out. Like she knows if throws it in my cart and waits, she'll get it when, when I buy something. Hopefully, uh, hopefully she doesn't sneak a home past you and then you're yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, um, okay. So first is obviously if there's the people part of it. What's the next kind of thing that brokers can take away from what you guys do and, and, and apply their business? So something that I've seen on both sides of the border is something that Rocket does really, really well that I don't know that most mortgage agents, I'm not going to say all because that's certainly not true. I've talked to a lot of mortgage agents who track this stuff closely, but most mortgage agents are not really, really fine-tuned with the data in their business. And the Mm -hmm. data that I'm talking about is really just the lead funnel and the conversion funnel of their business. Uh, Most agents can't tell you how many leads that they brought in that week or that month or that year, whether or not they got those clients on the phone. Where they came, like, did they come from a real estate agent or a lawyer that you know? Are they friends and family? Did they come by way of an online posting that you had? Or did you run an ad on search or social? Um, did you end up pulling credit on that client? And if you did pull credit on that client, did they qualify once you pulled the 
credit bureau? And did you present a mortgage solution that you think made sense to that client? From that point forward, did they move forward with you? Did you send them an application? Did they send it back? Did that mortgage go on to get submitted? Did it go on to close? These are all things that we track religiously that I don't know most mortgage brokers do. And I think that the downside to not tracking your business is if you're looking for a place to improve and you should always be looking for somewhere to improve your business, you might just look at the full funnel and say, business is down right now. But if you were to actually have that data, you'd say... Right. It, where, is it, where is it dropping off? And so you guys yeah, are really measuring... More yeah. than ever, but maybe, right. maybe more of them are getting denied right now because you don't have the right product or because for some reason you got a little uh, a little shy around pulling credit bureaus on clients because you had some mental block thinking that clients aren't going to qualify. And you could quickly say, I just need to pull a few more credit bureaus or I just need to present a few more solutions or I need to run down a few more alternative options or try to get an extended ratio approval or something like that. Like The inches we need are everywhere around us. As the saying goes from the movie Any Given Sunday, it's also one of our isms. And I think that the inches are in that data, but if you're not tracking it, you're setting yourself up for uh, for a hard time trying to. Fix yeah, your business. you're guessing, and guessing is you know uh, data is what you need data. So first is it's more people mortgages are still a sales business, and you people are the best bet for that or best solution. Second is track data, and and at the end I'll give some ideas on things that as a broker you got the stuff you guys track is insane to me. The amount of the amount and detail of the data allows you to go really fine tune. And so the average broker is like, well, I can't do that. But there's five things that I think that they can track. And I'll talk about those after. But so what would be the last thing that you'd say is uh, that the average broker could learn from what you guys are doing? So I think when a lot of people think of Rocket, they think of technology again. And I'll, I'll bring it back to that. Just to say that I think a lot of people spend a lot of time and energy trying to build technologies, like really trying to string stuff together, especially if they plan to grow a business around it. And I think in most cases, it's a mistake. I, I actually believe that nearly everybody in this industry should be a buyer of technology. Fact of the matter is we have great technology partners in this industry. Um, you know, like our, for instance, our, our POS is, is, is set up on Finmo. And a lot of what Finmo has built over the last handful of years has been based on user feedback from all of the brokers across the industry. Finmo isn't the only player in the game. But if you were to talk to those folks or, or anyone else, they're listening to brokers every single day saying, what do I need to build for you to make your mortgage business better? And they go out and build that. So right. you can make a decision like you want to go have 45, 55 developers on your team trying to compete with the Finmos of the world. Or do you want to take the best of what Finmo can offer and what a Salesforce or uh, anyone else in the CRM, Blue, whoever it may be like, Take what the the best of what everybody else has to offer and apply that to your business. There's simple ways to do integrations nowadays. And I think that if you were to spend more time just applying the technology and being a great applier of it rather than a great builder of it, you'd be right. a lot And then along. just focus on your customer experience and be like, how can this technology help me serve my customer? You know, the thing that surprised me when you and I we chatted and you guys you have a, you have more you have probably more depth. Like if you look at a bench of technology experts on your team than any other mortgage company that I know of in Canada, certainly in the, and the same in the U.S., and yet you still don't build your own CRM, which would be like you got to. Everybody's like, kind of build your own CRM. You're like, no. So tell me about that. Like, what? Why is it that you guys don't build your own CRM when you literally have the, you have the people to do it and you have the expertise? The simple answer is there's thousands of people developing for Salesforce every single day or a Salesforce. You can't, you can't out, you, as you said, you can't out Salesforce, Salesforce. Like they're just going to out iterate you and then you guys can focus, but they can't out mortgage you guys, right? Like, so you're in your lane, which is mortgage, you're a technology driven mortgage company, but you're in your lane, but you're not trying to build a technology because that is a hard thing. And, that and it should be your only focus. All the other parties outside of Salesforce, if they build something great, the first thing that they do is they set up a Salesforce API integration. Like it's, it's, they make these things plug and play for everybody else who wants so to. So then if you want to apply something, you just go click, got it. And then you can, and you can deploy it across all of your people versus, okay, we have an idea. It's going to take us months to build and get it tested and get it like you can, you can move so much faster and just focus on the client experience. Agreed. I mean, I, I, I like to think about it, like there's still going to be complexity when you put other systems together. Like there, there's a trade-off. You're either going to build 
and then manage after the fact, or you're going to plug in some different things and then you're going to manage after the fact. Like there's still going to be a management aspect to putting these things together and, and getting them set up. But we feel that the compl- complexity is, is much less. And we build a lot of things for ourselves, but what we build is a lot of customizations, not a lot of build from scratch. And that's on purpose and, and, and by design so that we can move faster in our business and get things out the door rather than multi-year builds to try to replicate what other people have done already. Right. And they've spent hundreds of millions of dollars doing it. And you're like, so I, I just, I find it funny. I mean, there's a, there's a, this mortgage brokers think they can be tech people and tech people think they can be mortgage brokers. And you're, it's very rare to meet somebody who can make that transition. If you're good at being a mortgage, just do that. You make lots of money. You just get good at serving clients and squeeze every opportunity out of every opportunity. And don't, don't get into this. Then just buy the technology off the shelf and apply it and, Sure, maybe modify it if you want to, like you guys do. You guys modify some of these things, but it's like a, it's like you're getting a factory vehicle and you're souping it up with your own customizations. You're changing this and that and trying to squeeze as much out of the engine as possible. That's that's how I see it. You're not building something from scratch. A hundred percent. Even when I think about the way we built our lender and our brokerage business, we started with the the brokerage business on Finmo. We built our lender. We built our underwriting platform, and then we connected Finmo directly to our underwriting platform. We don't even need a lender portal because of the simplicity and the integration of which we have our underwriting platform hooked up into Finmo. Like you can actually submit your deal and your documents directly to us from Finmo. You're not saving them to a separate SharePoint site or, or some Google Doc somewhere else. You can actually submit them directly to us through Finmo. We receive them in the same place that we got them. We then trigger notifications to come back to let you know that we got those documents, uh, you being the agent, we're giving you the status updates back through the same systems in which you're working. Like it's, it's all seamless integration. And it's because of the way that we built our business with partners uh, as being our technology partners. Be a buyer, not a builder in those, in that area, be a buyer, not a builder. Okay. So quick recap. So give me the recap on this. And then then I want to ask about kind of some cool stuff you guys are doing in Canada that maybe not everybody knows about. I feel like they should, but if they don't, we'll talk about that. But so tell me, let's do a quick recap on the three things the average broker can take. Yeah. Mortgage is still a people business. Data is a mortgage agent's best friend. Be an applier of technology, not a, not a builder of technology and focus on what you do best with just sales and marketing. Yeah. hundred percent. The thing I always tell people is the reason that we, so many, you know, lenders are in the channel banks is because you can walk into Scotiabank arena. You can look around, see all the Scotiabank signs and get a, a, a mug with Scotiabank on it and then walk out, talk to a broker and get a mortgage at TD bank. Like if they yeah. could get you just from that, they would not work. Like not, I love Scotiabank. They're a great partner, but if they could acquire the same business without us, they would, they would eliminate us for sure. We're, we're an expense item, man. But the thing is that we can get into nooks and crannies of communities that they can't. We can build relationships they can't. And so that's why I still think that brokers have a long shelf life because of the get good at sales, service and marketing. That's really the three things you gotta, you gotta really get good at. Um, and, uh, so tell me about what's happening in Canada. So you, you know, you built out, you, you came to Canada. You guys kind of, you came undercover a little bit. You came as Edison Financial, which I've always liked that name. I'm a big Thomas Edison fan. He's a guy with some massive ADD. And then you guys, you know, rebranded to Rocket or Mortgage and you guys were direct to consumer, built your own lender. And now you guys are moving into like the broker channel with the lender. So talk, talk to you about this. Yeah, I think, uh, I think what you're saying is that like a segue is you're talking about the branding aspect sort of resonates with me because you look at broker market share, it's gone from 20% to some reporting somewhere around like 44, 45% in, in just a handful of years. Why is that happening? Right? Like banks would not pay mortgage brokers for, for deals that they didn't have to. The, the fact of the matter is mortgage brokers are doing a better job than ever getting in front of consumers where they are. Some of that is online. Some of that is in the communities. Today, our mortgage brokerage, Rocket Mortgage Canada, is online. That's where we get our clients. People are Googling mortgage. People are finding Rocket Mortgage Canada, things like that. But we know that in order for our business to be really diversified, to be really successful across Canada, we've got to be where the clients are at. And mortgage brokers are where clients are at. So we love our mortgage broker relationships. And I, I think it draws a lot of passion out of our team. So just in the last week, we uh, we launched an exclusive partnership with with you and, and your team at, at Brick Scott. And it goes back to the relationship that I have with you. You and I started getting to know each other about four years ago 
when we uh, when we launched Edison Financial, and you didn't even have bricks at the time. You just said, "I want to I want to do cool stuff. I want to help brokers grow their business." And I just said, "Me too." Um, didn't know exactly what the future would hold at that time. And, you know, it certainly wasn't like, "Hey, we're going to go do direct to consumer, and we're going to get really good at that, and then we're going to launch a lender, and then we're going to get good at that, and we're going to go take loans from uh, from mortgage agents across Canada." Like it wasn't necessarily a linear path. No, and and looking one. back, like I think Steve Jobs always says, you can only connect the dots looking back. Look, you know, and, and same with me, I never thought I'd start a brokerage, man. I was always like, I'd rather shoot myself than do that. That sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> and then here I am, like, how did that happen from like, I'd done a complete 180. I mean, I, I sort of, there's a whole story there, but the reality is, is that when people act like it was all by design, I think that's a little bit of ego. It's like, sometimes it's just, you're stumbling your way. You have, a, you have a vision, like your vision is like, Hey, we well, want to help customers, your guys' case. And and then same with me. It's like, I want my customers mortgage brokers. And so you just want to like, you know, keep, and then that through iteration and testing, you find stuff that works. So lots of stuff doesn't work. There's so many dumpster fires. I can't even, you know, I could do a whole, I could do multiple episodes on every dumpster fire that I've, I've created in the, the stuff I've tried. But, um, so I think it's pretty exciting. So like, if, you know, you guys are coming in, you're obviously, we're working with you guys exclusively. It's not forever. I mean, we, we love that we have this little opportunity to work with you, but you guys are going to get all the, you know, all the mechanics worked out. You guys are then, you know, there will be opportunities for other brokerages and people to work with you guys. Um, so what do you think is going to be some of the things that are going to help you guys stand out and grab market share in such a, a, you know, competitive market? We like to believe that this is still a speed and service game. And we talked about it, whether you're dealing with clients or you're dealing with mortgage brokers, the fact of the matter is certainty is at the forefront of everyone's mind. A mortgage is a very, very big transaction. And the faster and with the highest amount of ease that you can get that level of certainty is who you're ultimately going to do business with. And we were really intentional in the, in the early days of building out our, our mortgage lender um, about earning our mortgage agent's business. We did not just you know, roll out a lender and tell our agents, Hey, you've got to work with our lender. In fact, for physical your agents function cool. like a, then it, it, your agents function like a broker in that you guys have access to a whole suite of lenders, like any other broker. And then their job is to 100%. understand the client serve and then offer the solutions based on their specific situation. Right. So that's people, right. It's, not, it's not, yeah. We, yeah. Like we have, like we have to, we are, we're physical regulated. Our obligation is to serve consumers and put them in the best financial product that we have access to. We work with a bunch of other lenders and we have fantastic relationships with those other lenders. Still continue to send business to a lot of other lenders, not named Rocket Mortgage today. We knew that in order for Rocket Mortgage as a lender to grow and eventually, like you said, these things just sort of like take place to earn the business of other agents, not named Rocket Mortgage Canada agents. We were going to have to be the best lender in the space. We're going to have to be better we're going to, in, in, in the sense that like we're, we're faster. We offer more certainty. We offer more speed. Our technology feels seamless, that you can move through the process faster, that your clients have better things. So I would say it's speed, it's service, it's brand, um, it's the tech, it's instant updates on your files as you're working through it. I'll give you a data insight, Scott, that really blew our mind when we found it. We ended up calling it Blackjack um, because it's 21. And what 21 means is we ran some data and figured out that 21 days was essentially the break point. If you don't have a client from conditional approval to broker complete, by the 21st day, your conversion on that client starts to tank. They start backing out on, on mm. the deal. That 21 days, for whatever, is something we haven't figured out the human psychology aspect yet. That's like the next layer of, of, of getting into the human behavior. But for whatever reason it is, we see a massive drop off on that 21 days. If you don't have that deal broker complete, where that agent's called their client by that date to say, got all the docs, just got the go ahead from the lender. I'm getting everything off to the, uh, to the lawyer right now. Something around that, clients start to get a little bit worried. Like, are you going to get this done? Whether right. you know it or not, they start checking around. They're either Googling, they walk into their bank branch just to say like, hey, let me just double check. Some doubt creeps into their mind. So we knew that we were going to have to be faster and the tech was going to have to... Do you, do you, I don't know if you can share this or you, if you know this off the top of your head, but do you know what the average is that you guys go from like lead to broker complete that you typically see? Like, what are you guys averaging? Like this, I'm talking average, about this would be not this would be on your retail side. This is not on like because you guys are new to the broker channel, but because and you can't control a broker who doesn't want to chase down documents because they're like you know like 
that that's a little different, but talk to me about that if you have an idea or talk about it. And, yeah. Yeah. Our, I'll go by median. It's a little bit easier for me because I, I have uh, those well tracked and I have the averages as well. But um, median, which I think is uh, uh, the best representation in, in our case, because these numbers are a bit all over the board, but uh, it's around 11 days uh, median turn time for. Um, from lead to broker uh, complete. Uh, yeah. And I, I would totally agree with that. Yeah. Broker complete. One thing I think that we'll do in this space that will help all brokers, I think the way that we track our data and the speed that we operate at will force all lenders to step their game up to better serve mortgage brokers across this beautiful country. I truly believe right. that because not only do we track our data, we track that data the same way for every lender that our brokerage mm, does. Interesting. Business. Yeah, yeah. So without jumping into it, I can tell you the turn times on every single lender that we deal with from you know submission to approved, from approved to broker complete, to how fast they review documents and respond to our document requests. You can tell how much cream they put in their coffee. Like you're measuring everything. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the underwriter likes three cream, two sugar. Everything. Almost. And then we yeah. and then we stack right that against our lender and we're like, we have to, we have to be the best at everything. Like we have right. to track every single part of this funnel, just like, you know, agents dealing with clients. We're going to become the best at everything. And that's what this last year of our journey has been about. Right. Once we knew that we had that so dialed in that we're like, we are the fastest, most efficient lender in the space for what we do now. We're going to have to expand yeah. it. But for what we do now, why shouldn't brokers have access to this product? We know they'll love it. And that's when we decided that we should be working with others. Yeah, no, that's amazing. So how do you plan to build a, yeah. that business? Talk to me. I mean, we talked about sales earlier. So like, I, I do have a habit of like, just going to like, you know, the, the old salesman in me, which is like, we're great. Everything's going to be perfect. But where does the rubber meet the road? I, I think it comes in, do we or do we not help brokers build their businesses so that they can serve more clients and that brokers as a whole can take a bigger pie or a bigger piece of the pie when it comes to market share. Brokers are already doing that. And I think we've just scratched the surface. I think that clients are looking in their communities and online rather than walking into a branch to get their mortgage more than ever. And the data bears that out. I think through the technology that we'll provide, I think through the speed and service that we'll provide, I think, uh, based on the training that you and your team are doing and some of the trainings that we're going to roll out. Like it, it's not just about, you know, Hey, we'll, we'll fund your deal. We want to give back. And for us, we believe that we have some of the best training in the industry. We can give that to brokers when it comes to branding and marketing. We've got brand name in uh, in the consumer space. We can lend that to brokers in pretty cool ways to help them grow their businesses. I think the greatest test will be, can we grow mortgage broker share as a whole? And I honestly want Rocket to be judged on our ability to do that in this space. And I think that's good for you. It's good for us. It's good for all brokers who are your primary listeners. And I think uh, I think we're going to have some fun on that journey together. Dude, I love it. So where can people find you online if they're looking for you? Yeah. First and last name on all platforms, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn. Instagram, Facebook, um, LinkedIn is definitely my preferred medium. I'm, I'm the most active on LinkedIn. I tend to stay up on my posts there. Um, you can find our team. You know, we've got a, we've got a sales team in place here at our lender, and I think folks who are interested should reach out there. Brendan Woodfull, uh, Woodfull with the standard spelling of Wood and Full at RocketMortgage.ca, as well as Tori Prenny. Um, you can find her on. Any of, uh, of my platforms or the Rocket platforms, but T O R I P R E N E Y at rocketmortgage.ca. Those folks are running our sales team. They'll answer any questions that you have. And I'm always available as well. And uh, let's do some amazing things. Yeah, dude. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to be working with you in more like a, this capacity. So thanks, brother. And um, thanks for coming on to chat with me. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for everything you do for the brokers. Hey, thanks again for listening to that episode. And so if you're a mortgage broker listening to this, a couple of cool things. One, it's awesome to see a company the size of Rocket have an interest in the Canadian market and bring their money and their clout and know-how into our market to try and help us grow it. Um, they're obviously a great partner in the U.S. of mortgage brokers and loan officers, and I have no doubt that it will be the same here. Uh, so I said there would be five things that I would recommend that you track. So they track everything, like literally like down to the minute on stuff. You probably can't do that. It'd be cool if you could, but you can't. So there's five things that I would track 
is leads. Uh, I would track applications, submissions, approvals, and closing. So that's five things. Leads, the number of leads you get. You want to know this on a weekly, monthly basis for all these numbers. How many of those leads become applications? So what's your lead to app ratio? Because are they, then that can tell you, do you have crap leads? Do you have good leads? Do you have some people that are good sources of leads and some that aren't? Right. So you got 10 referral partners or 10 realtors and two of them, they send you all kinds of leads, but you get no apps because they're garbage. So then it gives you a chance to be like, go back and either talk to them and say, Hey, what, what are you saying? Can I, can you coach them or do you replace them? Uh, your app to submission ratio. So then that comes down to like, okay, how, how are you able to take that client get and convince them to get you the, the, their data and their information? Cause hopefully you're not just submitting without documents. Uh, cause if you are, then you're really making your job difficult. But so are you able to get documents from the client and submission to approval? So do you understand your lender guidelines? So if you can't get, if you don't, if you get lots of declines, you probably, you know, you're going to get some declines because we, it's good to push the envelope a bit. But if you have a really high percentage of declines, then you probably need to do a better job of pre underwriting and or getting on the phone with a lender and pre selling the thing before you even send it to them so that you've got a better chance of an approval because it wastes time. Uh, and then, of course, your approval to closings and do you, are you losing, is there any drop off there? So you've got 10, 10, uh, files approved, but you're only averaging nine closing a month. What's happening to that one? Where are you losing them? And it gives you a chance. So if I was brokering, if I was in your business and I could only have you track five numbers, those are the five I would track leads, apps, submissions, approvals, and closings. And I would track them on a weekly, monthly basis. So you can always be paying attention to what you need to fix. Uh, obviously, Rocket can track way more than that, but I think that would be super useful for you. So thank you for listening to this. I'm Scott Beckford. This is Out of Mortgage Brokering Podcast, the number one podcast for mortgage brokers and loan officers to scale up their business. As I always say, there's no problem in your mortgage business that someone else hasn't already solved. Your problem is who's got the answer. And uh, our goal with these shows is to bring you answers to problems you have so you can build a better business. Thanks so much for listening and make it an outstanding day.